You know, one of the greatest joys that I have is putting on these shows and having that little element that anything could happen. So Kim and I made sure we are on the same page. That's with every guest. We work as a team to make sure that you get to know who they are so you can decide whether to follow them, choose their course, get to know them. And I'm telling you, we are ready for you today. So we're going to we're going to do this in three segments. So hopefully you can stick around for all of it. Um, just in case you're wondering, maybe it's your first time here. This show is driven by the audience and your participation. Very interactive. And Kim has been so kind to join us today. Uh, we've had a number of guests, so almost up to 400 and some odd episodes in just our first year. Because we want you to get to know the people that you follow. So, as you know, less of me, more of the guests. Let's get to Kim. Let's do this. <laughs> what did hello, I tell you? Hello. I told you if there's a technical difficulty, what we're going to do. And sure enough, it happened. Can you hear me? I can hear you. And now I can hear you. Uh, we are um, going to do this. Um, we're going to have some fun because, um, as you know, in our show prep, I get right to it because the audience wants me to be quiet so that uh, they can talk with the guests. <laughs> they essentially want me to go study, study and be quiet. Uh, Kim, thank you so much for being here. Um, I have a number of things sitting here in front of me. Uh, you, like all of the guests that we've had before, uh, my daughters and I put on this show so that everyone will get a chance to get to meet people who can help them. Um, I want to start it off by talking about your boot camp. Okay. <laughs> uh, I see right. that you're relieved. You're going like, what is this first question going to be? Uh, the show is always about my guests. So if you're first time here, the show is always about the guests. Everything will be about uh, uh, whoever is in front of me. And Kim, I am honored that you're going to be here. We're going to do three segments together. But this is the first of three shows that we will be doing together. Um, the others will come in October and in November, uh, either via YouTube or something else. But we're going to we're going to let everybody know. But right now, so many people want to know about your boot camp. They wrote me. They want to get an understanding what it is that you offer. Okay. Well, I used to, when I first started out, I was doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. And although I loved it, I could only help a, a limited number of people. And so I... I designed it around my coaching curriculum, more or less. And then as time went on, I added some things to it to make it really interactive, um, as opposed to just watching a video, because the interactive element is what really helps people. Uh, there's something about writing that really allows you to connect with your subconscious mind. And so there are lots of interactive exercises in there and workbooks and that sort of thing. I also have some exclusive guided meditations um, and a private group and some bonuses. You know, uh, students get copies of my books as well as some other eBooks to help with self-esteem and that sort of thing. And I get emails all the time about how effective it is helping people not only break free from that toxic relationship, but to start healing during these first weeks and navigate their life because a lot of people believe that it's going no contact that's so difficult, but it's really what comes afterwards. And so that's what the focus is. That actually is one of the things that you and I talked about, of course, in the show prep, because um, I let you know the, the fundamental purpose that my daughters and I, when we started this, we're all about recovery. We talk about narcissism, relationships, and recovery. And one of the main reasons I, I reached out to you and I wanted you on because the work that you do really talks a great deal about life after uh, the narcissist. Um, yes. 
that really is something you focus on from personal experience because of clients. What makes you go down that road more than what a number of other people do? Well, honestly, I've been writing about narcissism for many years now, and frankly, there's nothing new to learn about narcissists. It's all been written. It's all been researched. But fortunately, there is a lot of new um, approaches coming out now that can help people recover. And I really like writing from um, a victim or a target's point of view because I think it makes everything more relatable. Okay. All right. And and that is, I have come to find in, in just doing this for a short time, is what I noticed that stands out about the way you put an angle on it. Uh, there's so many people that write about uh, how uh, narcissism is. Your twist on it, though, makes it where the target, the victim, the person who's been victimized, is empowered to move forward. That's exactly. what I know. Yes. Yes. Um, what we know as narcissistic abuse is now becoming more widely known as coercive control. It's yeah, really the right. new form of domestic violence. Um, there isn't always physical assault and physical abuse that happens. Uh, it does happen in a lot of cases, but there does mm-hmm. not have to be physical abuse for it to be considered domestic violence. And that's exactly what we're dealing with here. This is the new domestic violence. And we need to start looking at narcissistic abuse um, as coercive control because that's technically what it is. And it's now illegal in uh, parts of England and Wales, I believe. Yeah, a a number of uh, people have have reached out to the show and said that it is what you just mentioned, uh, becoming something illegal in, in their part of the world. Uh, I have to turn to the screen because on this show, if I don't acknowledge the audience, they're, they're trying to get in and they, they're okay. going to need me to be quiet. So I'm going to point out a few <laughs> things that people have mentioned. Uh, I do have to read this to you. Uh, Mama Razzi. Uh, by the way, first time coming through, if you'd like to put a fake name in, put your real name, if you feel emotionally safe to do so, if you're not accustomed to being on our platform here, uh, we need it to stay emotionally safe. Uh, You can put a name in because I will butcher your Instagram name. I am just like, (laughs) I'm a senior citizen, so I will tear up your name. So feel free to drop in a fake name if you want to. Uh, Mama Razzi says, hi, Kim. Thank you so much for saving my life uh, through this trying time. She's got a face with a a kissy to you. Uh, And also, I got to see if I I saw another one here. Okay. um, Okay. Carolina says to you, have you noticed? Uh, she's speaking to you. Uh, have you noticed that narc self-help attracts a lot of narc? I often notice they often infiltrate comment sections of videos. Not only comment sections on videos, they're everywhere. And absolutely, yes, a lot of narcissistic people. And it's not just uh, partners, we're talking about other coaches, we're even talking about some therapists. I've been attacked by such people in the past. Um, but yes, they are definitely infiltrating, not only online, but also, um, you know, things like meetup groups, you know, people used to before yeah. COVID came along, would have meetup groups, mm-hmm. and they would infiltrate those, they will infiltrate basically any kind of affinity group that's centered on healing, uh, emotional healing, and uh, healing from trauma, you know, yogi communities, I mean, spiritual communities, churches, they're everywhere. This, this is uh uh, as I am green to all of this, uh, my daughters and I, and putting this uh, show on for people to get to meet others uh, in the community, uh, that seems to be a common thing. Uh, that seems to be a thing in which uh, so many people tell me that they've talked to this coach or they've been on this show, not this particular one and other shows, and they run into a narc. What do people need to keep in mind when they're searching for help to, pr- to protect themselves from the perpetrators and predators who, well, portray themselves as being helpful? Well, that is very tricky. Um, 
And sometimes you won't know until you're in the middle of it, in the thick of it. Okay. Um, but one, some of the things that I generally tell people to look out for is if someone is claiming that their program is the absolute only one that's going to work in the entire world, <laughs> that's, that's, that's not a good thing. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, because we're all different people. We learn different yeah. ways. We yeah, heal different absolutely. ways. And so um, so that's basically the first thing to look for. Or um, a coach who is calling someone out personally. Um, okay. You don't want to publicly attack someone. Um, that's not really a good sign of someone who is resilient themselves. Um, yeah. And I would also say, see how long the person's been around, because the topic of narcissism is so saturated right now. And we have people everywhere trying to hang a shingle and, and jump on this, what they see is a, a wave. And um, so just make sure it's someone who's well established and has been around a while. Yeah. This is very important that you're highlighting this right now. There are a bevy of things that people wrote me they want me to ask you. Uh, people are very good about knowing that I direct and produce the shows, and they can't tell me what to say and do. But some of the stuff was pretty good, and there's no way we're going to get to it. We're going to have to put it in other shows when we get together. Okay. But some of them I have to touch on today uh, because yes. they're pretty good. And then there are points that, uh, of course, you and I talked about that uh, you highlighted you wanted to, to talk about and I think are great. And uh, I'm going to do this to you now. I hope you're ready. Here we go. I'm going to show okay. you something. Okay. Um, I have in front of me three sets of three index cards that we're going to use as a platform, a springboard into our discussion. By the way, I love the headset that you got there. It's working really good. <laughs> so, great. So, oh, uh, for some of you, if you don't know, this is Kim's first, right, Instagram yes. Live? Very yes. first. I'm such an introvert and I've avoided doing this for so long. And I'm really glad I'm doing this with you. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Well, you have no idea what I'm going to ask you, though. <laughs> uh -oh, but but <laughs> you're handling it well. I figured I was going to try to go 15 minutes before I mentioned it, but you're doing so well. You, you know, you. you're a pro. You're a pro already uh, at doing this. Um, what I was going to say is I have three. Uh, this is a common thing on our show. Uh, we have index cards that uh, we come up with to ask our guests. Everything is related to your page and what we've already talked about. So there's nothing uh, scandalously bad that I will be bringing out uh, because okay. uh, we just don't roll. We just don't roll like that. Everything is always emotionally safe. Then we have three more. Uh, you will find out what they are. And then we'll get into the last set of cards, which I'm going to show you right now. There are three of them as well, but... On this show, anytime something is yellow, that means, oh, my goodness. But it's on your page. It's something about you. So we have the last set of cards are three yellow ones. Okay. Now, the first set, oh, oh you haven't, you're still with me? You haven't you ran away I'm yet. Here. I'm here. Okay, so that's good. You're here. Okay. So here we go. First set. The first set of cards are the pink ones. And by the way, I just have to say hello to everybody. I normally do a shout out to everybody that joins. Um, I'm going to just do this real quick here. So I inspire one who was a guest here. Thank you for passing through. Uh, the beautiful coach Elizabeth Shaw has passed through or is still here. And others that have con come here, Empath Warriors, of course, the PAC coach uh, is here as well, Anastasia, the PAC coach, and others that are here. We truly appreciate you. Leave, no contact, go ghost. And uh, all of you showing your support for my guests, uh, it makes me very, very happy because uh, individuals are giving of their time. Uh, and um, they're here to support and encourage any who would like to be here. Oh, my goodness. They're writing you so much. I'll get to that in just a minute, everybody. Right now, first card. Here we go. I'm going to say this word to you, and feel free, which I love on our shows, when people go on a tangent and just keep talking because okay. I don't want to keep talking. <laughs> so, so I'm going to say this word, okay, and whatever comes into your head, because everything is related to narcissism and recovery, and relationship. The word okay. is focus. Why is it important for us to make sure we focus? Okay, when I think of focus, I think about recovery 
And what I see happen is people who have been out of their relationships for sometimes five and 10 years, and they're still stuck. And that's because their focus is still on the narcissist. And what I mean by that is they're still in the Facebook groups. They're still researching narcissism hours a day. They're still watching the YouTube videos. And all that does is keep that traumatic uh, neurological wiring alive because your subconscious mind can't tell the difference between something you're reading or imagining and something that's happening in real life. So as long as we're doing that, now I understand this, you know, it may not be easy or practical to completely stop watching things about narcissism, but you want to focus that on your recovery. So, you know, when you join a program, for example, you want to start doing it from A to Z. You don't want to do a little bit of, of your program and then hop back onto YouTube to watch more videos about <laughs> narcissists. What happens is that becomes an addiction. Uh, when we're in these toxic relationships, we do form a biochemical addiction to the ups and downs. We become addicted to the drama and the trauma. And so if we are not careful, even though we're out of the relationship, the research becomes the addiction. So we have to be careful about what we focus on. Hey, I'm sorry. I got to do a timeout there. The research becomes the addiction. I'm sorry. That is so good. You need a chapter in a book or something that says that. The research can <laughs> literally become the addiction almost as if it's replacing the narcissist per se. Exactly. Yes. That is, I never looked at it that way. That is, I'm sorry. That's a deep moment. I'm sorry. I'm pro as a guy, I'm processing <laughs> that right now in real okay. time. Okay. That is pretty deep. No, because then a person can't move forward is essentially what you're saying. Right. Yes. Because of that, great answer. And everyone across the screen is saying just that. Matter of fact, a few people are saying, uh, oh, uh, well done, Kim. First uh, live IG show. Uh, okay, that's really sweet. I just noticed it. Thank Paxton, you. Thank you for that compliment for, to me as well. But they're giving you props uh, for doing that. Thank you. Leave no contact. Uh, and they're saying, the PAC coach is saying, thank you for joining the show. Uh, I'm so you got to detach here. is what uh, I'm getting. Uh, Brahm is saying you have, you've got to detach. I really go, I don't care anymore is what uh, he's highlighting. And uh, others are saying, oh, oh Kim, uh, you're doing amazing. Um, you're getting a lot of love across the screen. Of course, everybody, I'm trying to get to you. Uh, I love you showing love to the guests. Um, Second card. You ready? I'm ready. Uh, you're doing really good, Kim. Thank you. <laughs> you're doing really, you're really good. See, I'm enjoying the, the nervousness. This. I'm really... The nervousness is. Go ahead. You were saying. I'm just uh, really amazed at all the people that have shown up here. So glad to see all of you. Oh yeah, I can't uh, keep up with them, and that's really good. Uh, um, I'll read a lot of this back to you in a moment. Some really juicy stuff they're they're mentioning to you. Uh, I'll bring everybody into the chat here with uh, Kim in just a moment. I'm going to spend some time with her first because I get her first. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Uh, narcissist love to Hoover. So whatever comes to your mind when you hear the word Hoover. Hoovering. There are so many different ways a narcissist could Hoover. Um Sometimes that looks like them just looking at your IG stories or checking out your um, social media pictures. Um, it could be them calling, oh, did you call me? I just got a missed a miss call from you. Did, you. did you mean to call me, even if you didn't call them? <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Uh, especially during COVID, things like, oh, are you doing okay? I just, I just want to check on you. Do you need anything? It could be anything. Delivering flowers, showing up to your house unannounced, sending over your family, sending over their family. Uh, it could be literally anything. One lady highlighted that um, flowers showed up at her work. 
yeah. I think I can't remember whether she said 36 months or, or uh, over three years or thereabouts. And then all of a sudden, uh -huh. he sent her flowers like you <laughs> just like out of the blue. He sent her flowers. Hey, I just want to see how you were doing. Thought, you know, I know you like these. And she was like, "Okay, leave me alone." And so I guess you you you're definitely right. This can happen though, right? Right. And so sometimes we misinterpret what is really happening when the narcissist hoovers because we want to believe that maybe because we've been apart from them for a little while, that maybe they've changed, they've had time to reflect, and maybe they're feeling remorseful about the things they've done. And this is where I want to encourage people to watch the series or actually read the book Dirty John. Now this guy Dirty John, turned Dirty out John? To is that what you said? Yeah, he turned out oh. to be violent. Um, but it gives an excellent example of all the different kinds of hoovering that can happen and how it you know, how the target just really thinks that it's true love when really it's not. It's the coercive control. The hoovering is really just part of coercive control. And this is how they make you doubt yourself. If they do, you know, some kind of gesture that seems caring or maybe they're apologizing, it's just part of, it's a fabricated part of the abuse is what it is. So, so with time, a person can tell if someone is truly apologetic in many different ways. And sometimes you can trust it when you first get it. We're not talking about just in a normal situation. And that's what some people right. need to remember. Uh, another right. reason why I'm mentioning this right now that we're talking about is because we have two types of audience here. People who are just beginning their journey and those that have gone no contact and don't want to go back. So it's very important in both of those areas that they don't just take for granted that this person really means what they're saying or sending or any of the above. They're incredibly convincing. Wow. Uh, but again, um, I think it's important that people know if they don't already that narcissism yeah. is part of the dark triad and it's very closely related to psychopathy. So narcissists are very close to being psychopaths if they're not already. So Whoa. most full-blown narcissists will never be diagnosed. And mm -hmm. Really, when we're thinking about a narcissistic person, it's, it's a cluster B disorder. And what the cluster means, it's probably clustered with something else. So you could have someone who has NPD, but they're also antisocial. Or, you know, they could also have um, a cluster C disorder. So that's why it's hard for people to really pigeonhole someone as a narcissist because they may not check all the things on the narcissism checklist but if you go and look at the dark triad then things will probably make more sense and that's what's important is to make sure to do the right research then because if not you're listening and, and reading things that don't really apply to the person you're dealing with and you're expecting one type of behavior and give a response and it could sabotage and backfire on on, on me, whoever I'm dealing right. with, they may react totally different. Even though I may be in this group chat talking to everybody, mine may respond totally different, and I can end up sabotaging my own healing. Um, are you ready for the third right. part? I am. <laughs> okay. Wasn't that bad, huh, the first two? <laughs> no. That's because I saved this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You called it. See? You called it. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Uh, the word, the two words are trauma bond. When you hear those two words, my friend, please uh, tell the audience what comes to mind when you hear trauma bond. I think when I hear the word trauma bond, that someone has been emotionally traumatized by someone so much over a period of time that they are bonded to that person very strongly through emotional trauma. And we often uh, think that it only happens in romantic relationships, but it can happen in any kind of relationship. And I also want to point out that children become trauma bonded to their narcissistic parent 
And so that's why it often seems like your child is siding with the narcissist when really they're just trauma bonded and they really cannot help themselves. If we can't help ourselves when we're feeling trauma bonded, we certainly can't expect a seven or eight year old to be able to um, be more resilient than us. They don't have any points of reference to pull from and they can't process what's happening. And so trauma bond, you're bonded to someone through trauma. You, you brought up something that's happening over here on the chat. The chat is uh, moving quite quickly. Everybody, if it's your first time here again, I, I, I encourage you. Uh, many of the regulars are here as well. Uh, feel free to talk amongst yourself. Um, I will now start turning towards your, your questions that you have for, for Kim, and there are quite a few, and statements that uh, I'll, I'll toss to you, Kim, and you can okay. talk about them. But when it comes to trauma bond with a child, you highlighted that. You just, you just mentioned that. That's something a parent needs to be aware of. And, well, you're the professional. They shouldn't demonize the child then? Because the child is going through something that they themselves are either going through or have gone through? Right. And so I'll use myself as an example. Okay. I'm okay. 50 years old. I'm out here doing the research, and I've had the personal experience. And I've worked with coaching clients. I've you know, got colleagues in mental health and neuropsychology. Yeah. So I understand what's happening. But if you take a 7-year-old, they're going to school, and they're coming home. They have absolutely no clue about the concept of a trauma bond. They have no clue about the concept of coercive control or um, emotional manipulation. And so they're just helpless uh, when it comes to their narcissistic parent. And that's why I really try hard to advocate if there's any way that you can leave to try to do that. Because the longer we stay in toxic relationships, the more damage happens to our children. And I've really heard some extremely sad stories. And so that's why I'm so um, passionate about that. It, it is actually something that has been brought up here while we were talking. And even when you mentioned it, um, that, that is something important. Matter of fact, I'm looking at something here. I'll just read this to you. Narcissistic mothers... Uh, says, I now know I had trauma bond with my mother, and I have accepted this all through my life with relationships. Uh, so the trauma bond as a child, um, of course, the child doesn't know, as you highlight it. You're saying that they can carry that trauma bond in their future relationships, their secular and relational relationships, intimate relationships? Yes, and in many cases, not all, but in a lot of cases, that's you know, we hear the term codependency. Yes. It's my theory that codependency is really just a prolonged trauma bond that has been carried over from early childhood or early wow. life experiences. Wow. And matter of fact, um, I have to tell you this. Uh, Caroline Middles, Middlesdorf, uh, says, my son is unfortunately also a victim, and his narcissistic father is denying psychological support for him going to court for this the third time to get help for my little one. You've seen that often yourself as well? Yes, I have. And in fact, I experienced that myself once upon a time. And fortunately, I was able to get my son in to see his school psychologist. Oh, good. In, in some states, uh, you have to have both parents' permission to get your child into counseling. But I was lucky enough to get my son in with his school counselor. And from there, I was able to get him into professional, you know, other outside therapy that was more mm -hmm. um, focused on what he needed. Yeah. It should be a concern then, from your experience, that parents need to keep that in mind, like what you did with your son. Uh, so that they get what they individually need, which may, it may be different for each child if you have more than one child then, right? Right. And when you have older children, they may refuse to go to counseling at that point, right. and that does make it more difficult. There's, you know, not really a lot you can do if you have a 16 yeah. or 17-year-old who doesn't yeah, want to do therapy. Yeah. There's so. nothing you can do about that. 
Um, I'm going to read you some more. Uh, everyone, just keep them coming. Uh, I'm not going to ignore you if you are here for the first time and don't know that. Uh, the trauma bond, according to the great Dane mom, 666, uh, she says the trauma bond equals pain. Uh, that's something that uh, she's highlighting. Um, I'm going to read this to you and you tell me what you think. Can an entity of people gang up on a human being covertly to make their life miserable? Um, uh, covertly narcissistic uh, behavior to make an en another person's life a miserable. I've been harassed relentlessly for decades. That's from Audrey Hero. Your thoughts? Um, I would be curious uh, as to who or what the entity is, but I would say yes. Um, it would be kind of similar to how an organization might gang up on a whistleblower, for example, and, and do everything to make their life miserable. Absolutely. Yeah. It happens a lot. Yeah. Um, and to answer a question that's here, yes, you will be able to see this again. It will be on our page uh, and then it'll eventually go to our uh, website. And uh, also Kim, uh, as, as in all of our guests are able to get a copy of all the shows uh, of her show as well and anyone's able to do that too we'll work that out as uh, time goes on so that you can have a copy and do play it as you wish but yes to answer your question for the uh, individual that asked us that this will be there uh, another question someone has for you are there th are there key questions we can ask to get an indication when someone is just starting uh, to date uh, they're going on the first date uh, that's from Cher Unbound. She was our guest yesterday. Uh, are there key questions that a person can ask? I think when you're first dating, um, you do want to be mindful and you want to pay attention to cues. Um, I have found in my own personal experience that usually you can detect narcissistic people or let's just say emotionally unavailable people, players, um, yep. usually before you even start, go out on the first date. Yeah. Um, when you go out on a first date, you want to keep it light and fun. It's not really the time to lay out all your past traumas on the table and ask really serious <laughs> yeah. questions. Um, you can go on the date and no, that's without, a bad idea. You're saying you're saying that's yeah, a, I would not make a great movie though, but that's a bad it idea. It would. It would make a great movie. Um, you can ask, you know, you can ask questions, but if you're dealing with a person who isn't going to be transparent, they're just going to make up stuff, you know. That's why you may have to go out with someone for a little while before you find out, you know, if they're emotionally unavailable. Um, you know, if a person ghosts you, for example, and then tries to come back like a zombie from the dead three months <laughs> later... Wondering how you're doing. Um, I'm I sorry. Know. I got to stop you for a second. You need to write a book. I don't care if it's an ebook of only like 100 pages. A, a zombie from the dead. Yes, that you should call it. Dating 101. A zombie from the dead. That is That would be very funny. You just start listing things. If this happens, you know, it's like check mark. That's bad. I'm sorry. Go ahead. My marketing, my marketing is coming out. Well, go ahead. You were going to say. <laughs> um, so just feel it out. You know, sometimes you can tell right away. Now, when I look back on my own journey, there was a time where I couldn't tell. But looking back I'm now. I'm sorry. What did you just say? Can... Your what kind of journey? <clears throat> in my own dating journey. I'm thinking. Oh, I thought, back I'm to... sorry. It broke. It broke up a little bit. I thought you said on my man journey. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Well, I suppose you could my, say that. Um, yeah. Because that would be a great chapter be. in the book that you should write called Man <laughs> Journey. Okay, go ahead. All um, right. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So, on, your, on your own journey, you were saying? Things to look out for would be how they treat the wait staff. You know, if they're going to leave a decent tip. And if they are going to, you know, just out of nowhere and without, you know, you asking, they're just suddenly bashing their ex. Those are the things that will tell you without you even asking whether that person is really going to be good, you know, relationship material. 
Got it. All right. Um, uh, more questions for you. Uh, everybody's agreeing with you on the Dirty John uh, reference. Uh, and they also want to know, uh, does hoovering, this is from the pack coach, uh, she's okay. asking you, Kim, does hoovering happen only with the narcs? Are you asking from a target's point of view? Good point. Um, so um, the pack coach, the uh, feel free to clarify that uh, for us. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna point something else uh, uh, at you here. Hold on one second. Um, narcs uh, drain your energy. Uh, now you have pointed that out as maybe the research is becoming an addiction. Uh, others are agreeing with you on that. Uh, great point. Careful how much we research. Uh, we need other focuses. People are saying that they need, they're agreeing with you, they need to focus on something other than just the narc. Why is it important for us emotionally to make sure we're growing in all points of our life and not just becoming a narc professor? <laughs> I just made that up. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've been there. There was a time in, you know, in my own experience where all I did was just sit and just read. I mean, I had books upon books. Oh. And um, that's no life. It's really, yeah. you know, pe people joke about getting their Ph.D. in narcissism. And I really feel sorry for these people because I know that... They're not really living. There's so much more to life, you know, um, spending time with family, you know, maybe getting a hobby or traveling or just going to the bookstore to read other stuff. You know, I love bookstores. Yeah. And there's just so much more out there to experience. Yeah. Right. And, and there, there are people who are out to take advantage of others who are stuck in that mode or find themselves still reeling from being a target or a vic being victimized. And so a balance is needed. Uh, and But a balance is also needed for a person who wants to go back into that situation uh, to make sure that they don't go back into that. Um, how well, can a person I... fight that urge to, to go to social media and check up on them and drive by their house? You have to white knuckle it. Uh, okay. Yeah, because I mean, I think everyone probably has checked up on an ex, you know, but it's usually not just, oh, I'm going to check this out once or twice a month. It's usually every day and yep, yep. they're looking at the new supply and they're thinking, oh, my God, the narc changed for this new person. <laughs> this is all a story that not only is the narcissist fabricating on social media, but then we, it becomes our story. Yes, they changed for this person. That never happens. If it's really a narcissistic person, they never, ever change for anyone, not even their own children and not even for themselves. Wow. So, so a person needs to be really careful what they're buying into from those postings or anything like that because they'll start to gaslight or beat up themselves thinking that maybe they've made progress. You know, maybe they really started living, they got a hobby, they start doing things, and then they relapse and go take a look at the former addictive source, and there they go beating themselves up thinking, oh, you know what, uh, I'm not as good as that woman or good as that guy. Uh, look at the, who they're with, where they're going. Well, they were fake when they were with you, so they're going to be fake with that new person too, right? Right, and... I talk about this sometimes. I have worked with people who were models, you know, beautiful uh, by society standards, people who yeah. were well off, you know, financially. Narcissists don't care what someone looks like. I mean, they wow. might get sort of a temporary sense of achievement if they go mm -hmm. to their office party and they have a really attractive oh. person with them. But yeah. They are not thinking, oh, this person is really wonderful and they're beautiful and I just want to spend my life with them. It's really more of a trophy experience for them. They're still going to treat that person the same exact way. No matter I've what. I've actually had. Go oh, ahead, please. Um, I was just going to throw in. 
I've actually had yes. people email me and comment on my blog that they were the new supply and everyone thought oh, that, it, you know, things were just so wonderful, but behind closed doors, it was just a living nightmare. Do they often, um, and you just made me think of this, uh, does the narc often abuse the next person more than the last? I think it's it's really a you know subjective sort of situation. Um, it really kind of depends, I think, on the person's uh, temperament. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe they aren't um, used to putting up boundaries, and so unfortunately, sometimes a narcissist might get away with abusing someone worse, depending on the situation, you know, what their job is. And you know, it could be, it could be anything really that would uh, influence that. When it comes so to, many. when it comes to our vibe, the vibe we have per se, who we are, some people believe uh, that, uh, well, it's because of our vibe that we attract the narc. Um, I want to be able to talk about that in our next segment. We have literally gone 42 minutes, and uh, my, oh the, my chat, gosh. The, the, the chat in the corner of my eye, which I, I'm looking at, is I'm trying to keep up, but I'm sorry. Some of this stuff is really good. We, we're going to take a break, or commercial break, uh, here uh, in just a moment. And that commercial break is going to be about 15 minutes because that's how long it's going to take me to, to save some of these points and pull out some of the questions uh, so that we can go back to them so nobody will feel left out uh, that they drop their question off even if they had to go. So um, we're going to do that in a moment. But we're going to talk about when we come back, everybody, we're going to talk about, well, is there something about us that attracts the narc to us? Uh, Kim's going to share some information with us. You don't, of course, as they say, want to miss that. But before we go, uh, one one thought question uh, for you here. A thought that I have. A question, Kim. Yes. Are you are you still nervous? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really enjoying this, and I'm just. Oh my goodness. I'm just really glad to be here with all of your followers. Oh, this is amazing, and they keep coming in, and so I'm, I'm going to give a little recap again, everybody. We're not ending it like ending it, and we're not coming back. We will be back, and all of the questions that were dropped in or that you put in, if you're still here, I will now go and uh, make sure that I will take note of those and bring them back into the group chat when we come back. Uh, we are so honored, Kim, that you are here. Uh, I say that from uh, in behalf of my daughters and myself. They are my executive producers, so they could fire Thank me at any you. point, of course and replace me with some, <laughs> some younger guy that's not 60 years old. But um, I am going to, um, oh, my goodness, they're giving you so many hearts right now. Um, and they're saying thank you oh, to you, Emmanuel, uh, so uh, Miss Djibouti. Uh, Miss, uh, Miss I just recognized your name. This is why I asked you guys to put fake names in here. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I do want to read something to you here. i read a couple of things to you real quick uh, from people that okay. are here. Uh, Great Dane Mom 666 says, Kim, Please, can you talk about how they box their targets uh, by Madonna or whore? In other words, they use certain terms uh, to label their target. Uh, I, was mo I was moved uh, boxes uh, once all physical got withheld after three. Bear with me here as I read this. Three years contact remained the same, but everything was withheld. Um, uh, Great Dane, uh, either now or when we come back, explain a little bit more. But I think she's talking about how they label their targets. They, they give them certain labels or names uh, or demean them uh, or belittle them with names. We can talk about that when we come back. Uh, the other thing here that I'm going to bring uh, out to you, Kim, uh, we want to learn as much as we can do this never happen so that this will never happen again. But yet we need to stop focusing on them. That is kind of where we're going to go with the show. That comes from hidden meaning. Um, that's a part of the way you do your coaching, per se, to not really give all that energy uh, into focusing on them, understanding it, but correct me if I'm saying that wrong. Right. So especially in the beginning, in 
if you are this, I mean, I, I talk to people in my coaching practice and they, you know, have been with a person for 20 or 30 years and they're saying, I just now learned about yeah. narcissism. Yeah. I hear and, that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you're just learning, absolutely educate yourself. You know, it can be validating. It can help you feel less alone. But learning about narcissists is not going to be the thing that heals you. It might help you put up a stronger wall, but that's mm -hmm. only the first step to an actual healing process. You know, going no contact and maintaining no contact, that's excellent, but you have to work on the healing also. And working on the healing is something everybody, so you'll know, we're going to touch on that before we end today. But I wanted to start the show off talking about the boot camp. The reason why is because that's the way you can show that you're committed to your healing. Because you can join uh, Kim's boot camp and move forward. The objective is not just to move on. Um, you know, platforms like mine uh, allow you to meet the individuals who have programs that can help you move forward. You will hear the stories that can help you move forward. You will be able to do things in a forward movement decision-making process. So um, we've enjoyed having this first segment with Kim, 47 minutes and counting. Everybody is still, like, blowing up the chat room <laughs> over here. Um, and so I'm going to uh, have a commercial break. Normally, everybody that uh, is accustomed to it, it's like 10 minutes. Uh, this is going to be a little bit longer because I need to go through everybody's uh, statements here and pull out the questions and some other compliments. And uh, we okay. will be back. So expect us back in about 20 minutes, hopefully. Uh, Kim and I will be back, and I'll talk to you, Kim, in a little bit. The first okay. segment. Got it done. I'll awesome. see you in a little bit, my friend. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.